Have you been thinking about how you can leverage Giving Tuesday to turn donors into recurring ambassadors? Join me for a free webinar presented by DonorBox on Halloween, October 31st from 1 to 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, this isn't just theory. It's practical steps you can use immediately to amplify awareness of your organization with your existing donor base in advance of Giving Tuesday. So head to positiveequation.com slash Giving Tuesday to save your spot. Hope to see you there. Giving season is right around the corner. And my friends at Donor Perfect are a team of nonprofit experts with over 35 years of experience. And they're here to tell you, and I'm here to tell you that it is okay to be overwhelmed, even after your campaign has ended. Between reporting, receiving, and welcoming new donors, your plate is as full as Thanksgiving dinner. That's why Donor Perfect has your back. They have built a nonprofit-specific AI tool to help you jumpstart your year-end content. I'm talking create standout emails, gripping social media posts, and inspiring appeals in less time than it's taking me to record this audio. Check out Donor Perfect's free fundraiser bot at donorperfect.com slash bot. When people think about or talk about AI these days, they're mostly thinking about chat GPT, right? Because that's what's forefront right now. But AI has actually been around and has been building up for a long time. We may just not have noticed. You know, when you talk about wealth screening, a lot of that is AI is working in the background to get that data and get that information for you. When you get those pop-ups, when you go to donation pages, suggesting different amounts, that can be AI-powered. Those wealth screening, like I mentioned, that can be AI-powered. Your segmentation is also AI-powered in a way. If it's suggesting like, okay, hey, here are the donors you need to reach out to, and this is what's happening, and this is the trends, there's seeds of AI in there that may just not have been obvious or as obvious as it is now. Hey there, you're listening to the Missions to Movements podcast, and I'm your host, Dana Snyder, digital strategist for nonprofits and founder and CEO of Positive Equation. This show highlights the digital strategies of organizations making a positive impact in the world. Ready to learn the latest trends, actionable tips, and the real stories from behind the feed? Let's transform your mission into a movement. Okay, guys, today we have a first time podcaster, and I am very excited that she is here with us. If you have been listening to this show, you know I am somewhat of a tech nerd. I love getting into the nitty gritty behind the scenes of how nonprofit technology works. What are the things happening behind the product scenes? What's coming up? And so today, when I had the chance to do this with Bloomerang's product, I was very excited. So today, Diana Atero is the Senior Product Marketing Manager over at Bloomerang. Diana, welcome to Missions to Movements. Hi, Dana. Thanks. And thank you, everyone. Thanks for having me. Of course. Okay. I always do some sleuthing when I have a guest come on. And you have been at Bloomerang for nine years. That's incredible. What got you into the nonprofit tech space? And maybe even more specifically, how did you end up finding Bloomerang in your career journey? That's very interesting. Well, I've always been passionate about helping others and I find really immense joy in volunteering. That's probably my favorite way to give because it's a wonderful way to engage with the mission and see firsthand the impact that the organization is having. But as a volunteer, you don't always witness the behind the scenes mm. efforts required to make things happen. Yeah. So when I was living in North Carolina, I joined the board of the Nantahala Hiking Club one of the 31 trail maintaining clubs of the Appalachian Trail Conservancy. And that really gave me an insider's perspective on tackling different challenges that nonprofits have, like limited resources and the need for efficiency. And I think really that's where technology comes in. Mm -hmm. So my journey into the nonprofit tech space was a natural extension of that. And I was just fortunate enough for actually Bloomerang to have found me because I had friends in the nonprofit space and they were like, oh, you should come work with us. And I was like, really, what do you do? And it really excited me because I could continue this passion and continue helping nonprofits in what I thought was a very innovative way. 
And I really saw how technology could really boost the reach and impact of nonprofit organizations. And that's how I got into it. So cool. And nine years, I mean, that's rare, I would say, in this day and age, too. <laughs> <laughs> what has kept you there? What keeps you like motivated and inspired to do the work? I think we all kind of feel this sometimes. Yeah. Well, I really love seeing the tangible impact that technology can have on nonprofit organizations and their ability to make a difference. So I've been with Bloomerang over nine years. I started in customer support. I did a lot of onboarding. I was on the product team. Now I'm on the product marketing team. Those firsthand interactions, everyday interactions with nonprofits, seeing what they struggle with on a daily basis and how technology can really help with that and how Bloomerang helps with that on a day-to-day basis has been really impactful. And in a way, I feel like I'm making a difference too because yeah. I'm helping them do their thing and achieve their mission. So it feels like in a way, I'm making a difference as well. I love that. Absolutely. I think when we find the tech tools or any software platforms that are helping us to be better at what we do and to feel better about what we're doing and be like, oh my gosh, like aha magic moments, then yes, you are making that happen. And now it's what's super cool is to be on the product team and be working, I'm sure, and tinkering on like what's next. And we're going to talk about one of those things today to kind of like set the tone of the conversation. Nine years, there's been a lot of changes in the tech environment, in the nonprofit space, specifically a ton of new platforms have come out. How have you specifically seen in your work the nonprofit technology environment shift and change based on, I mean, culturally, there's been lots of differences. As donors, you've probably seen changes. As nonprofit teams have probably seen changes and needs have changed. What has that been like on your side? I think one of the most profound changes that we've seen has been really the rapid adoption of digital technologies. We are seeing nonprofits increasingly leverage data analytics, artificial intelligence to really enhance their operational efficiency and better target their outreach efforts. Mm -hmm. And it's really enabling nonprofits to operate with increased transparency and accountability, which is crucial because we're seeing that a lot of donors are becoming more discerning and demand greater insight into how their contributions are making an impact. Yeah. Donors today also expect more personalized and immediate interactions. I think with the advent of social media, people are just used to that instant feedback and they want the same thing from the nonprofits. So it's led to a shift to a more dynamic and interactive form of storytelling yes. where nonprofits use digital platforms to share real-time updates and success stories. And, and that way they can foster a stronger emotional connection with their audience. So true. Yeah. I also think it's there's a lot of donor expectations around impact-driven giving. They're mm, not yes. just looking to support causes, but they're interested in seeing the actual outcomes. And so nonprofits are adopting those more sophisticated impact measurement and how they can tell those stories and how they can share and demonstrate the, the direct benefits of their work. That is huge. I know I specifically like feel that way as a monthly donor. And I talk about monthly giving all the time and how in my monthly giving mastermind program, a lot of times I ask, we are going to create impact dollar amounts because we want people to be able to visualize what they are providing. So whether it's putting a meal on the table tonight, whether it's, I just had an organization launch where they're covering vet bills for the animals that they serve. Like these are very like tangible visual things and also leads to what you're kind of talking about is storytelling and impact-based storytelling. So if you can have those dollar amounts that have an impact goal associated with them, X dollar amount equals X impact, then you have stories that then you can build off of from there, which I think is super powerful too. And to track that in a tool like Bloomerang, instead of using actually the one organization I mentioned about the vet bills, they were just using like an authorized.net payment processor and everything was going to a spreadsheet and they had have hundreds of monthly donors. And so when we onboarded, they were like, oh my God, this is crazy different. Like the impact of just having instant access on their side to data points is huge. Exactly. I was listening to a previous episode of your podcast 
you all were talking about like, what's a good question to ask a nonprofit when you're giving? And it's like, what are you going to do in the next 30 days yeah. with this gift that I'm giving you? What are you going to do with it? And, you know, having technology that enables you to have that quick answer for your donors helps with building that relationship, helps with that credibility. If you know exactly what you're doing with this donor's gift. So totally. yeah, that instant access has been fantastic. Absolutely. And you kind of teased this in the shift of having artificial intelligence, AI, and my friend Mallory and Nathan Chappelle lead the big fundraising AI event that's coming up shortly in October. When did you see in your work the first real introduction to AI and it really shaping and having more of a role, I would say, in the work it does in the nonprofit space? You know, it's been interesting because when people think about or talk about AI these days, they're mostly thinking about chat GPT, right? Because that's what's forefront right now. Yes. But AI has actually been around and has been building up for a long time. We may just not have noticed. You know, when you talk about wealth screening, a lot of that is AI is working in the background totally. to get that data and get that information for you. So I think it's been popping up in little ways, but it's just really gaining ground right now and coming to the forefront. So we're seeing it with little things like when you get those pop-ups, when you go to donation pages, suggesting different amounts, that can be AI powered. Those wealth screening, like I mentioned, that can be AI powered. Your segmentation mm. is also AI powered in a way. If it's suggesting like, okay, hey, here are the donors you need to reach out to and this is what's happening and this is the trends there's seeds of AI in there that may just not have been obvious yeah. or as obvious as it is now. Yeah, super interesting. Taking a quick break to thank our show sponsor, Bloomerang. Now in my monthly giving Slack group, The Sustainers, with more than a hundred nonprofits sharing tips and tools to scale their programs, the CRM and fundraising tool conversation comes up a lot. And one that always comes up in conversation is Bloomerang. So I want to invite you to take a look at this platform. They are the complete donor, volunteer, and fundraising management solution. Bloomerang helps nonprofits deliver a better giving experience and create sustainable, thriving organizations. The intuitive platform tracks engagement and provides powerful insights so you can focus on driving your mission forward. If you're interested, join thousands of small and medium-sized nonprofits that are already thriving with Bloomerang. Visit bloomerang.co and elevate your fundraising today. It takes time to wade through all of the fundraising tips on the internet to find the ones that will actually make a difference for your mission. So this year during year-end giving season, when you're up to your elbows and operational tasks, setting goals, tracking performance, keeping everyone aligned, and keeping your cool, there is no better time than to take advantage of Donor Perfect's nonprofit expert advice. Their free year-end playbook will help you set clear goals, create multi-channel engagements, and crush your stewardship plan. It is time to start ticking off boxes on that to-do list and head on over to donorperfect.com to get your free copy. So the team came up with an nice thought and I was like, ooh, I want to talk to her about this. Your team came up with the AI content assistant. So now there are more forward facing tools that the nonprofits can use within their Bloomerang platform. What was the vision behind the AI content assistant? The vision behind the AI content assistant was really to empower nonprofit professionals by providing a tool that streamlines the content creation process. And it aims to help users overcome writer's block, save time, enhance the quality of their communications. And a lot of it is really going back to the pain point of nonprofits have limited time <laughs> and limited resources. And whatever we can do to help them with those administrative tasks so they can focus on the things that only humans can do, like you know, strategic thinking and really focusing more on their mission, that's where really this all came about. I know we have trouble ourselves with sometimes encountering writer's block or oh my just goodness, can't find yes. the right words, right? And how much better would it be for nonprofits if we just took that problem away? And what could they focus on if we took this problem away from them? Okay. So when did it launch? July of 2024. Okay. So just recently. Okay. So at the yes. time of this coming out just recently, 
Can you see adoption rates on the back end? Can you tell if people are using it? Not quite yet. It's been very exciting because there's been a lot of interest in it. There, People have been excited because we've been talking about it in webinars. We've provided educational resources. So people are excited to try it out. Some of the things that they said they want to do with it is really coming up with those impact statements. Like, how can I make this really impactful to our donors or really also targeting or tailoring it to the specific audience, like being able to prompt it and say, this is an email for my monthly givers. Mm, This is what their gift does. This is what the impact is. You know, help me craft a statement that really is going to resonate with our donors. That's what we're seeing, where we're seeing the excitement. Okay. Yeah. I was going to specifically ask you about what does it help these nonprofit professionals do within the platform, where is it accessible? Like when you log in, like how would you be able to see it and use it? So when you log in, you go to our communication sections and emails, you start an email and there's content blocks within the email. So you put a content blocks in, let's say you're typing a paragraph. There's just a button that says write with AI. Uh, So you can ask it to check grammar. There's some built-in prompts in there that can help you if you're new to AI and not quite sure how to use it. It gives you some prompts as well and some tips on how to use it. And then it's kind of like a conversation, right? You have a draft of something, you want it to give you feedback or you want it to tweak it a little better. So you just put in your prompts of like, oh yes, make this more conversational or focus on this more. And it can be a conversation and you can choose to accept what it's already giving you or keep iterating and have it come up with something that's really best fits your need. And also we always, of course, advocate the human eye is very important. You know your donors best. So it's always nice to still review what the AI content assistant is trying to help with. Yes, definitely. So a great example of this, just this morning, I was sharing, I just launched four new monthly giving programs through my monthly giving mastermind. And I asked, which I actually want to talk about the difference of chat GPT versus this being like inside of your platform is in chat GPT. I asked it to create a LinkedIn post announcing the excitement of these four new programs. And I put in the links to the programs. It did a pretty good post. However, for one of them, it was like the, uh, it's a Basset Hound Rescue Organization, but that's not the name. And so it pulled Basset Hound Rescue of Georgia, which was not accurate at all. It's Guardian Angel Basset Hounds, and they're in Illinois. And so to your point, you definitely have to check it. And there's just certain nuances that definitely need to be humanized. So absolutely agree on the checking, but it does significantly help with just like getting thoughts started. And then you can kind of take it from there and customize. So literally speaking to this point, what's the difference between somebody going to ChatGPT and starting to write out an email versus utilizing the tool within the platform, other than it's also just saving them time having it in there. So we already mentioned the AI content assistant is integrated directly into Bloomerang's email editor. So it's really a more seamless experience tailored specifically for the nonprofit needs. And unlike using ChatGPT separately, the AI content assistant is designed to work within the context of Bloomerang's platform. So it's more aligned with everything that's already built in. Like we have a communications audit that's in there too. We have, again, those built-in prompts that can help. So it really streamlines the process so you don't have to go out into a separate tool. Another big thing too is I know there's still a lot of fears around using AI and is our content safe? So having that tool built into Bloomerang, it doesn't save any of that sensitive information that you would be scared to put into chat GPT. So we're a little more conscious on security and safety there for donor and nonprofit information. Awesome. Because it's in the platform, can it also pull relevant information to that organization, like into the emails? Not necessarily, because it's only what you give it permission to access. So again, it's not necessarily going to access that information that you don't want you have to be careful with what access you're giving it. Got it. Okay. So you are then prompting it. It just doesn't know your account. You have to, whatever Correct. you're putting in, got it, got it, got it. So if you wanted to like set the tone that you wanted it to use, you would manually input all of that and then it would save it and it would be able to know like further down the line or in each email, would they have to like re-put that in? 
there's certain prompts that we recommend of, or there's certain best practice we recommend of coming up with your own prompt library. For example, AI does take a little bit to learn yeah. what your yep. preferences are. So having that pre-built already is really helpful in streamlining the process for nonprofits. And it doesn't hurt to just always include as much information in the prompt as you can. So it doesn't get lost and it learns better as well. Yep. I think about it just like a virtual assistant or another employee on the team. And then I always say thank you or like perfect or like I always (laughs) talk back to it like it's a human being. Amazing. Can you share, do you have any examples of organizations that have used the tool and like what they've done with it? Not yet. Okay. I know it's so new. Exactly. Because it's still so new, we're still working on gathering those stories and we're excited to share them once we have them. Okay. Awesome. Beautiful. I cannot wait to share those as well. This is a huge, I just think like this saves so much time. And especially when you are, again, like you're talking about writer's block, it happens all the time. We're so busy. And if you just need something to get started, do you have examples of, you mentioned those like prompt starters in any of your, the trainings that you've done? Do you have examples of where people might find something like that? Oh, absolutely. We have a whole blog post, just oh, you know, great. different prompts that you can use. It's like, oh, if you're writing a fundraising appeal, here's a prompt that you can use. If you're writing a thank you message, this is a prompt you can use. And the great thing about it is we've actually tested those prompts in our AI content assistant. So we know it works. We know they understand the prompts. And I think that's a good example of like, this is how you structure the prompt to get the most yes. out of the KAI content yes. assistant. So I'll make sure to send you the link to those blog posts. Okay, beautiful. I will make sure they are linked in the show notes for this episode. So listener, you can go ahead and click the show notes below and we will have this link available for you while you're listening. Amazing. Diana, do you think, I mean, there's the, we're just at the beginning of AI and how it's going to be integrated and used into the platforms we already have. Do you think that in the product roadmap, I don't know what you can share, what you can't, but that Bloomerang will probably have more AI tools coming out down the line? Absolutely. It is very likely that without giving too much away, (laughs) Bloomerang will continue to develop and release more AI tools. And this is just the beginning. It's kind of funny when you ask that question, it makes me feel like, well, are we going to look for more ways to make nonprofits be more efficient? And of course the answer is yes. We're always going to be looking for for ways to help nonprofits be more efficient, to save more time, make the most of their limited resources. And AI is a great way to do that. Yep. I love it. I love tools that are always innovating, always looking for what's the next thing that we can help people and not staying like stuck back 10 years ago, but understanding that the needs, the demands, technology is changing, it's improving. So let's like nurture this and figure out how we can use it to the best of its ability for the clients that you serve. So Diana, thank you so much for coming on today. Everybody, please go check it out. You can just even Google search. We'll have the links. We can Google search Bloomerang AI Content Assistant, and you'll be able to see more information specifically about the tool and the rest of the product suite that they offer. Diana, where, if people have questions, what's the best place for them to contact you? Is LinkedIn good? Yeah. Find me on LinkedIn and that's the best way to reach me. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here. Any other links, resources, things that you want to shout out before we wrap? I think we're good. I mean, as I mentioned, this is just the beginning. So keep your eyes and ears peeled for more great stuff coming. Awesome. Beautiful. Thank you so much for your time today and everything that you're working on to keep innovating in the nonprofit tech space. Thank you. Can you tell I love talking all things digital? To make this show better, I'd be so grateful for your feedback. Leave a review, take a screenshot of this episode, share it on Instagram stories, and tag Positive Equation with one E so I can reshare and connect with you. 